Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to our webinar today. I hope you can hear me nice and loud and clear. We're just going to wait for one more minute. I hope everyone can hear me. So if you can just put in the chat box that you can hear me, that will be great. So just say, yes, we can hear you. And so I can make sure that you are listening to us nice and clear and properly. Yes, can you hear? Okay, thank you. Let me start. <laughs> Let me start. Maybe they are shy. Thank you for letting me know. I know that I know there are quite a bit of you out there. So if you can just let me know on the chat, I hope you can see chat on the right hand side. Just yeah. say yes, I can hear you. That would be great. Okay, since no one's writing to me, I'm hoping that you can still uh, hear me. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and I hope everyone can see my screen. Once again, we're gonna go ahead and get started because we wanna be fair to the 2930 of you who are here today. Thank you so much for being here this uh, this this day, this evening, this morning, wherever you are, and uh, listening in for taking the time and effort for being here to watch our webinar on how to get started and things to do in Berlin, okay? I can't even tell you, I know you don't know me, and you probably know who's on uh, the other screen next to me, and I know you don't know me, but I can't tell you how excited I am to be here today First of all, because I have this first opportunity in order to do this webinar as part of BSBI, which is such an honor. And then I have an amazing panelist who is going to be sharing lots of great insights about life in BSBI and also in Germany, and also to make sure that you have enough information before you even get there. So you definitely, definitely want to stay till the end because we are going to be sharing some amazing information with you. I also just want audience to take this opportunity to congratulate each one of you for taking this decision to join BSBI. You know, I've been with BSBI only for a few months now, so I've been spending a lot of time on the website and wow, what amazing courses and you guys are so lucky that you have this opportunity to study at such a great place. So I've been doing a lot of research and some amazing courses out there. So well done. Congratulations in choosing BSBI for your higher education. Now, in a short while, we're going to be talking about BSBI what happens on campus, but we're also going to be talking about Germany and the different types of opportunities that each of you can have and have the potential to have, okay? So get ready. I hope all of you have your listening ears on. Parents, if you're here, we're more than happy to take on your questions and concerns too. So before I go into the agenda for today's webinar, I just want to introduce my special guest. And unfortunately, I can't see her because I'm sharing my screen. I'm very honored to have here uh, Miss Ankita Jain. Now you must be wondering why out of all the people that I could choose from BSBI, why did I choose Ankita today, right? Well, Ankita, let me give you a little bit of background about Ankita. She was actually a student at BSBI. She did her bachelor's in banking and then worked for three years in the banking sector in Germany. She then completed her master's degree while working at BSBI in the administration and marketing department. Today, Ankita is part of the student services team and because she has been a student at BSBI herself, she is keen to help new students when they first arrive in Germany by having answers to any questions that you might have. Seriously, any questions that you have, she's your go-to person. So welcome, Ankita. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Do you want to add anything more? Have I missed out anything else to your, uh, to your introduction? No, I think it was perfect. And okay. Yes, I, I'm pretty sure a lot of them have seen my posters, my <laughs> pictures, because I was from the very first batch. So we were very, very little, uh, small group. 
so right. you can only see those five or six faces on the page but yes definitely now we have so many of them and it will That's be updated awesome. soon and maybe they stop seeing my face <laughs> so it should be no fun. we don't want to stop seeing your face <laughs> we want to continue to see your face okay so thank you once again for being here with us today and as for me, just a little bit of background. My name is Sangeeta George, and I have been a career counselor working in different schools and universities, uh, both in India and also in Dubai for more than 15 years. I'm currently the senior manage, uh, manager for the student support department. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of you must have spoken to my amazing team members. I'm sure that if I throw out some of the names of my team members, you'll know who they are. I just want to let you know, audience, uh, parents and students, that we are here to support you in whatever way that you need in order to make sure that you are prepared to take on this new journey. I know it can be very nerve wracking, but that's why we're having these kind of webinars so that we can be of assistance for you. And we're going to be talking about that a little bit through the webinar. Now, the main objective and agenda of this webinar is to give you as much as information as you need, right? First of all, to help you believe that you've made the right decision in wanting to join BSBI. Sangeeta, we never, yes. I'm sorry to uh, interrupt. I think it has not been broadcasted because normally when you click down attendees, you can see the names of the people who have joined. And now yes. I can only see you and me. That is the reason I think they were not able to respond anything. I did start broadcast. Can you just ask um, Frankis? Francis? Yeah. Yes, let me ask him. Because uh, last time when we were doing, I could see the names of the people who have joined, but I think it's not been broadcasted. I hope all of you are there, attendees, because I can see. All the names? I can just yeah. see the... I can just see the number 35, but the name is only you and me. I can see if you click on attendees, one is staff and one is attendees. If you click on attendees. Okay, if they are there, then okay. Yes, I can hear you, someone said. Okay, you know what? We're just making sure that you all are there. That's all, okay? <laughs> yes. <laughs> because, um, because we don't want to miss out because there are people who've written to me saying, yes, we can hear you. Yes, we can okay. hear you. Okay. So, so all of you are Perfect. there. Okay, all right. So uh, sorry about that. Apologies. Uh, I hope you all can all continue to see my screen. Uh, so yeah, just talking about the agenda, making sure that you are taking the right decision. OK, because we never want you to feel like, am I supposed to be in this place or not? And just the fact that you're here gives us a lot of hope that all of, a lot of you have decided that BSBI is the place that you want to be. And we secondly, what we want to do is to make sure that the transition is as smooth as possible for each one of you when you're moving from your home country to Germany, okay? So we will be talking about the different kinds of experiences that students have at BSBI, the services that are offered by BSBI, um, and many other things. Uh, Ankita might share her own personal experiences. We are also going to be talking about different things you can do once you get to Berlin. And don't worry, I'll make sure you have enough time to ask your questions, okay? So before we go into asking Ankita, uh, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be asking her some questions because she's been there, done that. She knows what it's like to be at BSBI, to be in Germany, to live in Berlin. So I'm going to be asking her some questions so that you can get first-hand information from someone who's already um, studied, been a current student at BSBI, and then an alumni now, okay? But before I move on to asking her questions, I'm kind of curious about my audience. So now this will be the real test actually, Ankita, because I'm gonna run a poll, okay? I have two polls mm -hmm. that I want to run, and I want to make sure that uh, that uh, now if they answer or not, then we'll know whether, whether they're <laughs> there. So my first, um, first poll, and I would really encourage all of you to please answer these questions. So my first question to you, you is is this your first time to travel outside your home country okay um and you will uh, hopefully see it now yes we uh, can see 
Yes, awesome. So then there are people who are answering. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for your answers. Okay. So 47 of you. Okay. Can you see Ankita? You can see, right? I can just see the poll, Ankita. but I cannot see how okay. many of them. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll call it out for you. I'm just giving them a few more minutes uh, in order to kind of answer. Okay, so 43 are saying I have traveled internationally before and 54, keep this in mind, Ankita, about more than 50% is saying this is the first time to leave their home country. So all the more reason for you to be here and gain all of this information. Excellent, okay. Uh, I'm going to run my second poll, um, which is how many of you have been to Germany before or have family or friends who are there currently? So if you can answer that for me, please. So we've understood that more than 50% haven't left their home country. And now for the second one, I'll give you a, a minute or two uh, audience in order for you to answer my question. So 38% is saying, yes, I have been there or have family or friends there currently. And 60 or more than 60% is saying, I have never been to Germany or know anyone who is there now. Excellent. Okay, thank you. I have one more that I, 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 um, that I want, a question that I want to ask, but I will wait till the end in order to do that. You can still see my screen, right, Ankita? Yes, we can. Okay, great. All right. Okay. Now, I think uh, just having that information, Ankita, will help you in the kind of information that you're going to be sharing with them also. So let's get started. All right. So my first question to you, we're really curious to know what your experience was like, right, at BSBI. <laughs> so what's your journey been like as a student? And what was it like when you first got to Germany? So if you can share with us your experience as a student, that would be great. With the numbers, thank you, because I think that's how they will relate me more because I have never been um, internationally traveled. I just traveled once that too, it was for tourism with my sister because it was my first time. And the second time it was like a solo travel to Germany for my studies. And I also don't have anyone in Germany or let's say in Europe who I know or who I can rely on. So yes, you guys will relate to my experiences and my funny experiences, I would say. <laughs> so yes, let's just, let's just start with the pictures, uh, the very below pictures, that's exactly, that was my class. Oh, that's that you. Exactly, yes, that's the very first batch of BSBI, May 2018. You can see how happy I am. <laughs> and yeah. it was, uh, we came in May, so it was sunny, and uh, we were taken out by one of our marketing lecturers. Uh, she just took it, uh, took us out for one uh, activity out there, and this the poster we just carried out because we were the first batch we were bonding up so we just took it for fun this was nothing for marketing we were just <laughs> welcoming ourselves uh, because we were the first batch and the very second batch you can see how the group has grown uh, it is amazing. one of the batch yes it is one of the batch in feb 19 i remember them because i know them all personally and they went to um, they, they also went for a module on field experience. So they went to a radio station here, which is very famous in Germany, to see how the marketing in radio uh, department is done and to meet various de departments. So normally okay. this is very general, um, what do you call general module structure, where the first session you have is theoretically and the second or normally the third session uh, is outside BSBI campus. So maybe visiting a company or meeting a guest speaker or something like that. So both the That's pictures awesome. are part of that. <laughs> And I can't believe how much the, the classes have grown in a span of one year, right? I mean, there were only seven yes. of you and look at they doubled up by the by the one year. This uh, is Feb 19. So you wow. imagine now it's it's much more bigger. <laughs> it's huge, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, what was it like? Were there how did you deal with the cultural differences when you first moved there? So I'll, I'll share my experience when I actually landed. I I was so nervous, I would say. So I have this um, kind of phobia when I'm too stressed or nervous. I tend to sleep more. 
people mm-hmm. eat more i sleep more i forget my food and everything so my <laughs> complete flight i was just sleeping and when i landed the first question i had was how do i get a cab from here because the right. language is different right they speak deutsch so the person yeah. who came out um, he was like a proper german tall guy with a blond hair and he just said he said something in german i couldn't understand it so i said him like sorry and then he understood that i speak english so he just said like tell me the address you want to go so i okay. just took out my phone and i just showed him like here and he said don't worry so i was very relaxed to see that the person could understand <laughs> that i'm flying from a different country and he was trying to help because it's not that they don't want to help you it is just the of language course. barrier basically so he right. allowed me to whatever english word i think he knew he was talking with me in english so he he dropped me to the place i met a friend she took me upstairs so that was the first in, instance i think because it was a very good gesture from the person i met like the very first time it right. took out the fear from me that although there is a cultural barrier with a small effort you can you can get through it and of course when you enter bsbi everybody is speaking english you feel like home <laughs> they are yeah. nice they are safe and sound so yes um, the cultural difference was there but for me luckily the experience was good and i've heard a lot of people the experience is good because it's berlin right so berlin Absolutely. has a lot many english speaking speakers so it was nice. very metropolitan yeah and and that's such an interesting point that you made an audience i want you to just think about what she said it's just a little effort that's it yeah. you know i mean we don't i think it's very normal to be scared or anxious especially at this time and we're going to be talking about how they're dealing with covid but just that little effort from your side to put the other person at ease also will make your journey to bsbi so much more comfortable right ankita right correct yeah. correct and don't worry they they also get german language courses here i think they have all right. the resources it is just a matter of using it how you use it and how you put it out there put it out absolutely okay so uh, you know i just want to talk about the transition from home country thank you for sharing your experience with us uh, many 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 years ago i went to canada to do my masters and i remember there was no one who helped me through that transition phase right and we're Amazing. talking about when atm machines had just come out we never used them you know and all of that and when i went to canada didn't know how to use an atm machine my point is that you know it has to be uh when we are leaving our home country for the first time you have to be aware of some of those things you know to be uh mentally ready for some of those things in a new country so even as students are getting ready to come on to campus what are some of the most important things you think they need to keep in mind in order to ensure the transition from their home country to germany what 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 do you think what what advice do you have for them uh the one thing i did or the first more thing which i did when i was coming to germany because i had no one uh, so i joined the facebook groups because it gives you an mm. aspect like a global aspect to which so every city basically will have those group like maybe uh, if you're indian then you have indians in berlin or students right. in right. berlin students in germany students in deutschland so try to join those groups and just be active just read posts just see comments because that's how you will come to know what type of questions people have what kind of answers you have because lot many time you don't have to go out there and ask people you know social media right. is now becoming like the most <laughs> what do you call the father and the mother of any child <laughs> because it is so it is it is filled with information it is just look at it so if you're planning to come just go to that group join those groups it's very simple right it's just it just take you 2 seconds and just be yeah. active just read about it and then if you have any questions of course you have your recruiters you have bsbi itself i'll be very honest if you don't have any family or friends it is fine because we especially student services we work in a way that we take students as our first family so it is fine if you come with us to it's stupid questions i'm serious sangeeta whenever they come in i've seen students coming here with their bags and they're like i didn't knew about accommodation so i don't know i'm here for registration but here is my luggage so we escort them to keep their luggage in a room where they are safe and sound we have a kitchen here they get lot, like refreshment they can refresh refresh themselves and then they register themselves like 
all the documentation is done and then we also guide you for accommodation of course i am not telling you i'm not encouraging you to come with your bags like this don't do that <laughs> we have services yeah. <laughs> for you to help you with accommodation yeah. but this is something i'm telling you this is the extreme which we have gone so far like we understand Absolutely. people can be lost when there's a lot of communication but it's fine so if you don't have family it is okay we are here come back to us and yeah i'm always here don't worry i'm here oh, that's awesome. <laughs> you know anyone listening to you would want to pack their bags and come right now you know that's how you make it seem <laughs> which is amazing and i and i think i can vouch for the fact that you'll really do support the minute a student enters berlin the kind of assistance yeah. and support how big or how small you you always meet the students at their point of need and i think that's very essential for new students especially if you haven't traveled so please uh, you know keep note of some of these things students and parents even as you're listening this is great kind of support i've heard of a lot of universities where once the student goes to this university campus they kind of have to fend for themselves you know finding their dorms or accommodation or where to eat and what to do but i think it's uh, done very differently at bsbi and i think that's the magic that you guys work all the time so thank you for sharing that okay one of the biggest questions that we always have at student support and i'm sure a lot of people coming to your office or one of the biggest attractions and why students look forward to come to germany is to work right so um what kind of jobs are available for students on and off campus so on campus uh, we started like i was the first student worker on campus to be very honest so i started with taking care of the merchandise like doing the admin work uh, taking care of registration so during registration we have some students um, because sometimes you are you can ask staff every question of course they all speak english but sometimes you are very comfortable when there is a student you can literally ask them like where do you eat which is the cheapest shop supermarket where i can shop you know so we do have yeah. students around during registration especially so that you feel comfortable when you when you have questions when you're finished with registration and you're done with your stress you know so we do have that yeah. so i was one of that student worker in the beginning so i was doing yeah. that and that's the reason i remember many of the faces of the students because i've been with them like i i was working but i was in part of that network building as well right so we have right. those kind of jobs uh, we have reception um we have jobs for students at reception and it is very um, i don't know how does it sound but but most of our students who started with student working jobs or the part time jobs they were so good they were so brilliant they, they were oh, hired wow. to a full time position later so now in each nice. department maybe it finance exams assessment or program coordination you will at least find one alumni working over there Nice. So there are okay. of course on campus opportunity and whenever we have openings there is a special email that is being forwarded to only alumni to give them like a first preferences uh, yeah. to see if they fit this position and in only if we cannot find anyone from that group then only the job would advertise outside the organization so this is okay. one of the beautiful culture that BSBI is taking forward and I really I, I feel proud to be part of that and i would say i'm proud that it started with me not like me but because i started they just saw that okay students can be also like a brilliant employees because they're coming yeah. for masters right they have experience they have worked with good companies so yeah absolutely and i think it says a lot about a university right when alumni want to come back you know it's not like they're running away saying i never want to see that campus again they're coming back saying we want to spend more time yes. on this campus and i think that speaks that's a testimony on its own about how wonderful life is at bsbi right um so what about current students are there uh, do current students have opportunities to work on campus and off campus too while they study yes yes so whoever is working part time or for a working student they work with the working hours limitation they have in germany so they can only work 20 hours and that's how the contract is given uh, so okay. we also have four council members they work on mini job mini job is like only 10 to 12 hours per week okay. so it is like it comes under student contract so yes they are working as a student but let's say out of four or five one of them is exceptionally good so it depends right. on the department if they want to offer them full time or if they think okay we want to take them for more hours but it happens only once you have cleared your 
thesis, you have got your degree in hand. Right. So it only happens Fair later. Enough. Yeah. Okay. So other than career guidance, what are the kind of support does BSBA, uh, BSBA offer new students? Uh, so I don't know if they already know about this free German classes they have. Okay. Uh, of course, you're studying. They have a degree. Uh, it is a master degree in project management. But if you if you're looking to work in Germany or let's say even if you just want to stay in Germany for longer duration, you will need a language support. Definitely like it is um, right. it is undoubtable. They will need a language. support. So normally okay. if you go to different universities, you pay for this extra services. You know, you pay okay. for one week, one month. But with BSBI, they have this german language course until the end of their masters or until the end of their course they can take this free language courses with us uh, german language courses and they can enroll themselves in the batch so it is okay if you studied a1 back in the home country you can directly start with a2 from us and if it is okay it is okay if you have not studied anything like just like me i just came over with a google translator so that nice. is also fine you can still yeah. uh, start from the very beginning and it is really nice um, when you started on campus because you have a lot of friends who are you know speaking you can joke about it you can go out and try with the germans and i will be very honest germans are really 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 nice if you try to speak with them in like a broken german they will literally they will not make fun for you yeah they will literally yeah. respect you and appreciate that you are at least trying and they will help Absolutely. you a lot so they yeah. have this okay. support yeah. that's comforting to hear yeah so that's huge so, uh, so free german classes for all students yeah yeah they have okay. this and then they have uh, student services which is combination of three services one is visa service uh, so they can come here and ask for any visa help let's say immigration let's say you have a do documentation and you want to take a help from that but with okay. this we have added like a professional service that is known as sers immigration service so we have okay. partnership with um, this immigration lawyer where they help you with and Meldung, that is city registration. It is very common. You need to do it when you come in Germany. Second mm -hmm. is your resident permit because they get an entry visa from home country, right? right? So they need yeah. a different visa when you enter here. So that service. And the third is consultation service. Maybe many of them want to bring their spouse, parents, or family reunification visa. Yeah. That is yeah. also included. So basically, they get all these three services in one service from a professional lawyer which is okay. absolutely free and BSBI pay, pay for that. Yeah, wow. I'm very That's jealous crazy. because this was not there when I joined in, but okay, <laughs> I'll let them get this opportunity. Yeah, let them let them benefit from it. Okay. <laughs> so this is one of them. Third okay. is of course accommodation, which is the major, major, I, I would say it's a major stress for any student coming here. So you can, right. they can already email us prior to their arrival and just say what kind of budget they are looking at, what kind of room they are looking at, how far it is okay. And then accordingly, the offers are sent to them because we have a lot of partners with brilliant offers and it keeps coming and it comes updating you. So you can you can just send us the request and maybe it's a good opportunity for you to see if you can share the flat with the already existing students of VSPI. Right. So that it makes it easier yeah. for you to, uh, you know, gel yeah, up to know the city more better. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, where to do your shopping and you know where to buy your things and stuff like that. I right. think it definitely helps to be with people who have already been there. What about like amenities uh, on campus? Like, for example, people who play sports or other different types of clubs and theater and music. I mean, what about you know for students who love extracurricular activities? So this is something which is taken care of by student council. That is why they are most active. And I would say the very noisy and uh, <laughs> noisy kind of group because they are always on the campus discussing some music. And I'm always like, oh my God, they're so, you know, because this is something I didn't have. We just did it within the class. Now they have different groups. Somebody's from tourism, somebody's from global MBA, from finance, marketing. So they are so nice. The marketing people will take care of promoting the club. The other one take the finance group will take care of uh, seeing the budget of the club. So it's nice. Right. So they have this sports group. Um, normally the most active club right now what they have is the football club. Right. They have a put so the, you have this um, public grounds basically like a public 
football uh, ground where they go and play every sunday i think they play uh, they meet together they have groups we were we were supposed to order jersey for them now but because wow. of this covid it is all stopped like we are halt because they cannot play now the outdoor games even right. that is halt and the second what they have is the cultural um, group where they discuss this art we had a art competition in december because the club was growing and people we thought that we we do have master student but we had like an artist also in our student so we hosted an um, nice art competition, competition. yeah yes and yeah. after five o'clock they take over the student lounge they put music they they practice different type of um dance like salsa and everything we we hosted one salsa webinar also on their wow. request because people wanted to learn yes we had yeah. that that as well i i watched a, a little webinar not a webinar like a youtube video like a 10 minute of um the student council having a freshers party like <laughs> online yes. right and there yes. was so much energy it was bursting through the seams <laughs> with so much energy of the student council you know what i mean yes. people were already there and i thought it was amazing what good energy they put out such positive energy you know i mean just joking yeah. around and just making the others feel really comfortable so i feel like that's the kind of energy on campus also very much you know people they will be very yeah, They're even if you have a yeah, that you've never been to Germany and you're on BSBI campus, you'll easily kind of fit in there. I think that's important. Yes, right? so they they actually planned it on campus for the freshers. So it is something right. that the council does for freshers. They planned everything, what food, what drink, what kind of music. With this COVID, we kept pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. And then there was an exams and the students were on campus and they were like, oh, we are freshers and we have not yet received the freshers party. So that's oh, how no. the council came up to an idea of hosting it online. And now with right. Feb 2021, we are going to host another one at the end of the month. So yes, nice. we do it for it every intake. Yeah. So a lot of you who are thinking of joining the Feb intake, <laughs> get ready for that online uh, freshers party because it's it's a it's a hoot i i watched it and it's and it's pretty amazing how they brought it together with so much and it's tough when you're doing it online you know but they were able to create that energy which is great so talking about covid can you ankita tell us uh, what kind of precautions and this is especially for parents if you're listening for you to kind of uh, ease up to your child traveling or going to germany pretty soon so what are some precautions that the campus is taking during these COVID times? Firstly, we are like completely online now. So if you right. see many universities in Germany, they they were not able to take the online structure because the COVID just hit and it was just closed out without notice. So it took them a lot of months. Even now, I think they are not full fledged online. But because we already had online platforms for students, to uh, have the resources on there to see the materials that the professor is uploading or to even reach out to their professor when they are not on campus. So we already had that in place, but from the very next day, uh, we, we just took one day off to inform them that the classes has been canceled for right. this, this regulation from government. But from the very next day, we used the Zoom platform for teaching. Uh, oh, we nice. started with that and all the lectures even our events are online because we're not allowed to host anything on campus and right. it's it is very um i don't know it's fascinating or not but in in just few months ago we had a bit of relaxation so we thought of making students come in batches like half of them online half of them on off campus and to attend the classes so that they get the feeling of being on campus and you know with their friends and you will oh. not believe 90% of them chose to be online. They were so really? comfortable. Yes, they were very comfortable because online gives you a lot of opportunity, right? You just type in the chat box, hey, I'm of feeling course. fine. Hey, I'm not fine. Or you just <laughs> open your camera up. They used to share pictures where the study desk is. So it was nice. And this is one of the precautions I would say we started with, but the students have just taken it, you know, beyond our expectation. They they have sure, liked it and they've appreciated it. Yes, agreed. That's excellent. That's such good news because sometimes we have such a hard time telling students about online classes. <laughs> so it's nice to hear that those who are doing it are actually enjoying it. They enjoyed you know? it. 
I guess it all yeah. comes back to that little effort that you talked about right in the beginning. It's all about putting in that little effort. And I think, you know, life will be so much easier for everyone. But what about Berlin? Uh, what are some of the precautions you've seen the city has taken to safeguard the health of students? So the first is you're not allowed to wear any cotton mask or printed mask, any branded mask. You should only wear the medical mask, which is prescribed okay. by the government. And uh, earlier we had issue with obtaining those medical masks, but we were providing it to people who are coming on campus. So let's say if you come to finance for some reason, we were open always, although the classes were online, we were always open. We had admin offices open. We had all the offices open. So if there is an emergency or you need help, students were always allowed to come in, of course, with an appointment and with proper precautionary methods. But right. uh, if they need masks from us, we were also providing it from here. And later when there were resources, government also started giving out masks in batches. Like you are allowed to take free pack of six masks, uh, uh, six masks from a particular location. So this was right. one of this and of course they reduce the frequency so that less people are traveling and there is less um, They they cut out any events that had more than 50 or 100 people in there so a lot of right. precautions they took and to be very honest the audience or um, the, the people of Berlin, I would say they are they're smarter. They don't go against government rules and law. They listen yeah, to they them. Follow. Yes, yes. And it was work from yeah. home, so I don't even see the reason why people would step out and, you know. Exactly. But yeah, we were not allowed to do work from home. Like, we, we were allowed, but we enjoyed coming in because we were scattered into the floor into different offices. So each office offices. had only one person, yeah. Right. Wow. Interesting. Uh, I want to be mindful of our time because I promised my audience that I would take some questions and I know questions are already coming in, which I will ask in a bit. But let's just talk okay. since we're on the topic of Berlin. What are some fun things your uh, our BSBI students love to do in Berlin in general? Like what, uh, what in and around Berlin? What are some of the things that they can do maybe over the weekends and things? And now Berlin spring and summer is coming. This is the best time. Yeah. yeah. It is famous yeah. for his nightlife, I would say. I, I also enjoyed the life, uh, nightlife when I came in the beginning. So yes, you will okay. also, also enjoy it. There are a lot of clubs with different themes. Um, they have this um, one of the club with a horror theme. So you can go in, you, you can dress yourself. There are some kinky clubs also. Uh, please mute me <laughs> if it is not allowed to yeah. say. So You're that not is also to say there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, that is also there. There are um, there are also events actually where you can go in. There are like art events, there are music events where you can go in. Right. There are and there are certain um, what do you call? There are certain times of the year where there are job fairs, career fairs. So you can go okay. in there and register yourself. Yes, Berlin is known like for a startup hub. Basically, I would say. So they kind okay. of arrange this job fair where small companies come in and they offer you job like on the spot. You can take your CVs and you can uh, speak with them and talk with them directly. So it's a really, really nice opportunity if you great opportunity. Come, yeah, it's a good. So you yeah. don't have to go to different companies at a different time. You just go to the job fair and you meet hundreds and thousands of uh, companies. Oh, that's a there. lovely way for students to get jobs. Huh? Yes, it makes a lot of us, so much. A lot of them go. Yeah, I didn't know you were going to talk about the nightlife in Berlin, but that's the picture that I put up for you. So <laughs> obviously you all can see this is what it's like. It looks nice and colorful, especially I'm sure spring and summer is beautiful and just nice. And I know, you know, Berlin is a city that really embraces like art and music and theater. Yeah. And, you know, there's tons of all of that. There are great music institutes. And, you know, so I think it's a great exposure for students. If you haven't been exposed to things like that, it's a nice opportunity to actually explore the city also um i have a uh, last two questions for you ankita and then i'll take questions from the audience uh, so mm -hmm. there might be parents who are listening into us today uh, so do you have any words of assurance you would like to share with them i would say um please trust your child <laughs> They will be safe. I think Berlin is the safest city I have been so far. Of course, it was my first experience being out there, but I, I have taken, I have traveled to different European countries, like just for travel, but I still feel Berlin is like most safe. I don't know why it gives a vibe of, vibe of being at home, you know, maybe right. it is the, it is the crowd because it has more young crowd and, um, 
it is fine trust them they will be fine i would rather say they would grow more if they go out of their home country because you meet different cultural people you exchange ideas you grow you build your networks right so yes i uh, just one line I, I i don't think i'm big enough to give you any advice but just trust you <laughs> Well, yeah. from your experience, I think you have every right to, you know, tell parents what it's like. Your parents let you go at such a young age, you know, okay. uh, and I know parents are a little bit more cautious now. I completely understand. And that's the beauty of having your child start online. And then hopefully, uh, you know, in the next couple of months, we're really all hoping that things open up and that you have that experience. And so can you imagine, parents, your child having an opportunity to have these hybrid kind of classes where it's been online and then they get to be on campus which a lot of us didn't we all had to have contact classes but i think just having that combination of having online classes as well as you know uh physical uh in class um classes i think that's a great opportunity to start off your child on and last question what words of wisdom do you have for the students who are listening words of wisdom huh? <laughs> Okay, um, the one thing I would like to say is trust in yourself because um, I didn't I didn't do it in myself to be very honest. It was my elder sister. She I don't know how she has a different vision for myself for me and she was the one to push me to Europe. So you guys will not believe I actually came here with a with a mindset that it is only 18 months. I just have to go there study and then come back, you know, with a with a bubble mind, I would say but right. I, i'm very happy because i came here i started working with bsbi and now it's been more than 15 months that i'm working full time with a different completely a different industry i'm not from a marketing i am actually from finance background so you know i have to i have changed everything um, my way of looking i think it is necessary sometime to go out of your comfort zone to get something right. which which you don't know you can achieve so it is okay, okay if you find difficult if you're scared i i would say it is good if you're scared because if you're scared that means you're doing something right that's what i've heard it long back but i never believed it i always thought it is a quote but trust me it is it is different when you see yourself back in two years and you see oh my god this is the thing which i never thought and i have achieved it right like i just came with 18 months to get the degree from BSBA and then go back to my mom and dad. But here I am and now uh, in a few months I will be eligible for Niederlassung, which is like an unlimited visa for Germany. And maybe wow. sooner or later I will be a citizen of Germany. So That's this amazing. is how the life goes on. Yeah. So no. trust and truly in wise, Ankita. Truly wise. No, really, those those I mean it's I think it's okay to be scared, you know, I mean, like you said, it's okay if there's a little, if you're nervous a little bit, you'd rather be a little bit nervous students than be overconfident and then have a hard time, you know what I mean? So I really hope, uh, you know, a lot of these questions have uh, um, given you the answers that you need to some of the questions and concerns that you might have had audience. Uh, I'm going to take some questions yeah. now. Someone's asking Ankita, uh, do you have a gym on campus? <laughs> no, but uh, we would love to have that because we have a lot of uh, students who are interested in this physical activities. But we do have a yeah. partnership with one of the biggest gym in Berlin, that is Fitex. You can actually Google uh, where you can get a discount because you're a BSBI student. So when you come nice. here and you want to join the gym, uh, you just approach us. We give you a different, like a unique code, and then you get a discount. Like I think it is a 20 or 30 percent discount on your monthly subscription with that gym. So yes, we do have that. That's but on cool. campus, and I'm sure there are lots of running trails and stuff, huh? You can cycle, you can run. Yes. All, I'm sure all of those are also there, so you don't have to be confined to a gym other than in the winter. Uh, I'm sure there's skiing. There's lots of other things that you can do in and around, right? Yes, people here uh, generally take bikes like this bicycle, I would say. Uh, yeah. I have a lot of my colleagues who come in with the bike uh, in the morning. It is considered one of the fresh exercise you can have in the morning. And they have right. a different lane for bike. So, yes. Oh, nice. Not oh, there is priority <laughs> given to bikers. That's awesome. Uh, someone's asking, do you think classes will be online for the October intake? 
I am not sure, but I think the vaccine has started all over the world. Uh, so maybe by the time they come in, um, the classes will be off campus as well, like on campus as well. But maybe if the scenario is worst, it can be a combination of both, like on campus and off campus. Because with this um, COVID, uh, we are not allowed to force anyone to take offline or online campus. So we are going to give them right. a choice uh, that they can either come here or take it back uh, at the home country on the screen. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, great. Uh, what do we avoid in Germany? <laughs> Someone's asking, what is there to avoid in Germany? <laughs> avoid? Mm, I don't know. I, I have not actually tried to avoid anything, but there is a myth, I would say. People saying you don't get vegetarian food in Germany, which is oh. not true. Yes, which is not true. There are a lot of vegetarian hotels, restaurants where you can get food. Okay. And there are a lot of other snack items which are vegetarian. I would say instead there are also vegan food as well. So oh, yes, nice. the myth. yeah. Uh, there's someone who's asking, I'm just trying to pull up his name, uh Gangan something. Uh one minute. Uh Gangan Preet Kaur. Uh, you asked about when about your appointment. So if you can, I'm going to put up an email address pretty soon, uh, Gangam Preet. You, uh, you said, ma'am, please, can you can you let me know about the appointment? So if you can be a little bit more specific about the appointment you're talking about, I'm sure someone can get back to you on it, right? That's the best way to do it, right, uh, Ankita? Yes, I think he's about... asking about visa appointments because we do have this kind of questions always. So it okay. is something you want to where... We can actually. Um, so, um, Gagan Preet Singh, if I pronounce it correctly, I think you're asking about a webin a visa appointment back in your home country, correct? If that is the case, you will have to keep looking at the website from where you're applying to see when the window is open because opening because this is not something that BSBI can uh, help you with. Of course, we can help you with visa documents to check if you're applying correctly with all the documents or providing you with the documents. But we do not help you with appointments because this is solely government uh, decision and we do not monitor government. So this is one of the things. I know a lot of them are stressed because they're not getting appointments. Right. And I think another thing that you can do is get in touch with your student support officer. Uh, I'm sure they would be able to give you up to date information about uh, visa appointments opening up in the particular country that you're applying from. OK, because it's constantly changing. It's important for you to have up to date information. So just get in touch with your student support officer and I'm sure they would be able to give you information also. Uh, here's a question. Does BSBI offer any type of scholarship for bachelor students why not scholarship to any student who is um, good in academics who who deserves it i would say so basically you have two opportunities you have post enrollment scholarship and also pre uh, enrollment scholarship so basic first one is pre enrollment when you're applying for with admissions you get a chance to apply for a scholarship uh, so they will check your past academic record how good you were and everything of course we need to see that you are on a merit to give you a scholarship right and the second scholarship is post scholarship so let's say you did not knew about the scholarship benefit before applying so you still have a chance after you have taken an admission and normally this uh, scholarship amount is decided on the way you are performing with the course you have with BSBI. So we don't see your past records. We see how well you're performing, how good you are with attendance. We also check your attendance and we also take reference from one of the professor who have checked your assignments or who know you personally, basically. So this is all done. So you do have option. And with bachelors, they I think, yes, with bachelors, they can apply with every year because they have three years program. They can apply right. for scholarship three times for the during of the course oh that's excellent yes. i didn't know that it's not a yearly okay fine that's great to know oh so there are scholarship opportunities also i know there are discounts that students get too but nice to know that there's uh, scholarships also there's a student who's saying uh, ma'am please uh, what can you say about me who is yet to receive the unconditional offer letter and also haven't gotten a date at the embassy so let's just uh, address the unconditional offer ankita you want to do that or you want me to take it 
normally it is admissions uh, who gives you this and if they are if it if there is normally a delay it is because of the documents that you have submitted maybe they are yes. reviewing it or they are still pending an answer from the university where you so you apply with bsbi right but for a program with uninet to know uca or cuc so maybe that is being sent to uninet to know and the approval is still pending so if you are not received an answer that means it is still in the process if it is rejected or if they need more data then definitely they will email you that is one of the thing i know sangeeta is that correct yeah uh, so absolutely i think uh, if you haven't received your unconditional offer it's because some of your documents are still pending so it could be a transcript it could be you know multiple things depending on where you're applying what program you're applying for so uh, just again get in touch with you know your student support officer or your advisor and they will tell you exactly what's missing once you yeah. give it in there should not be as long as you're eligible for the course you've met the criteria there shouldn't be a problem in in order for you to get that unconditional offer with regards to getting an appointment for your embassy like ankita said before it really is country specific uh, we won't be justifying if we sit here and uh, you know give you a generic statement as to how you can get your appointment it's something that you will need to check on a daily basis with regards to the embassy that you are applying the particular embassy so for example even in india there are different places that you can different uh, cities that you can apply in so it just depends from city to city and what's happening in the embassy get in touch with us i'm going to put out an email address pretty soon and then we'll be happy to take uh, your questions or at least direct it to who can help you with it okay uh, here's a question it says ma'am can you please give us some tips on how to clear the visa interview <laughs> You've been there, Ankita. Come on, you can give us some oh tips. Oh my God! Can... There is no tip, to be very honest. Uh, just be <laughs> calm and composed. And normally they ask you just one or two questions, like, "Why do you want to go?" Okay, I want to go for studies. Where are you studying? It is. But normally they have all the documents. They just see if you're aware of what you're submitting. Okay, so just be calm and composed. Don't worry. It's not your job interview. They are not going to kill you. They are not doing anything. Okay, they they just want to know that you are genuinely applying for studying or not. So just be aware of what you are submitting, and they might ask you some questions. Where have you studied before? To see if it is exactly what you have submitted. You know, the name of the school or which course you are going in. That's it. It is nothing more. yeah i i completely agree with you and i just want to say you know if you are authentic if you are real with what you're putting down in your motivation letter and in your application you should not be nervous you know that itself is pretty much a pass but if you don't know what you wrote and someone else wrote your motivation letter for you <laughs> then you are in trouble my point is yeah. please write your motivation letters on your own and make sure that the reason for why you are going to germany is real is authentic and there's tons of support that we can give you in making sure that you are writing really really good motivation letters yeah. okay so just come to us and we're more than happy to help you through that process there's a question and uh, and i'm just quickly going going to answer it ankita it says can we join the online classes from our home country for a month and then come to germany after that yes. absolutely that's what we would love for you to do that's what you need to be doing that's the right direction in which you need to be moving start classes online so that you're not delaying it actually increases your chances of getting a visa by the way because the immigration officer knows that you've already started your classes and uh, you know and we can show proof that you've already started it makes you get your visa even faster it actually enhances that whole process and makes it quicker if you start online and then decide to go to germany at a later date so absolutely that's the way that you should go i'm just going to take the so many questions that are coming in ankita for you and just in general um but uh, someone i'm just going to take one or two more questions and then we're going to end this because i want to be sensitive to everyone's time um what's the job scenario like in germany right now what's the job market in germany right now do you would you know if there are jobs that are available of course uh, you you i don't know um, i think it is not very famous uh, back in other home countries linkedin you can actually go and make an account already because once you come here you will advised to do so uh, by the career manager here on campus 
Uh, right. But I do know personally my friends uh, who have got full time jobs during this COVID. So it is a myth that there is no job. There is a job market is of course it's a bit crunched. I would say like if there were 100 opportunities now it is 50 or 40 opportunities. But if you're good enough, if you try well and if you are there at the right time for the right position, then definitely you can get through because the alumni which I know, I don't know any of them without a job. They and right. a lot of them right. have uh, found the job or signed a contract during this pandemic. So of course they have struggled a bit more. Let's say earlier it was one month for you to search a job. It might be two months now or let's say three right. months, but right. you get a job seeker for 18 months, right? It's like one and a half year. So it is still you still have a lot of time to search for a job and the job market is definitely crunched, but there are job opportunities and I personally don't know a single person who has not got a job. That's so it pretty is amazing. Yeah. And the 18 month visa is for both bachelor's and master's students, right? Any seniors, anyone. That wow so students i mean i hope you heard that uh it's for both bachelors and master's students i know somebody just asked me after my master's will i get a visa absolutely you know yes. uh it's just that it all comes down to that little effort that you need to put in uh unfortunately we're running out of time i'm just going to quickly put up an email address that all of you can write into i know that a lot of you are already in touch with your advisors your student support officers get in touch with them with some of the questions that we haven't been able to take and we're more than happy to answer them for you i have one last question which i'm going to uh, ask all of you and i would really like you all to be honest about it how many of you have decided 100% on BSBI as your study destination okay so yes no you're still thinking about it uh, you can you can go for it and just answer and we are uh, and then we just want to see whether you all have decided or whether you haven't or whether you're still thinking about it and that's completely fine okay so we're still uh, can you see answers can you see uh, can you see my poll uh, Ankita yes I can see the poll okay all right it says 100 percent. yes i'm really excited as of now so i'm not sure okay people are answering now now i can start to see so there are those of you who are still deciding which is completely fine get in touch with us we're happy to take some of these questions if you have any concerns we are happy to actually uh you know direct it to the right person uh if you are thinking about what your visa status is going to be like or what your interview is going to be like we can help you with that also so thank you everyone for answering those questions okay so we have come to the end of our webinar ankita thank you so much for your valuable time i know you're going back to back in different appointments <laughs> and webinars itself but really thank you so much for uh, sharing your experience and your expertise with uh, you know the audience today and with me i've learned so much more about uh, life on the bsbi campus so we really really appreciate you being here today audience thank you so much we have loved your questions thank you for being patient a lot of you have actually stayed till the end you listen to us for one full hour i'm very grateful next month so we're going to make this a once a month thing next month i'm going to be running a webinar on the top three things that you need to do before you go to germany and that's about starting a block bank account getting health insurance and finding suitable accommodations you definitely want to come back join me for that webinar thank you so much once again audience thank you ankita for being here we look forward to seeing you at our bsbr campus really soon have a great day bye thank you Thanks, everybody ankita. take care bye bye bye